This week on The Spaceship, Karen and Melissa settle their differences and Captain Gordon Taylor runs out of toilet roll. Oh, I hate that. In the year 2104, a fleet of research cruisers were launched into space. Their mission, to seek out new life. With every moment on board preserved by wall-to-wall -wall monitoring and transmitted over time back to Earth, we've been allowed unique access to one of these ships, the really invincible three, Macclesfield Division. What you're about to hear took place live, four years ago, 70,000 light years from home. 10 a.m. Hmm, it's a tricky one. On an ordinary Monday morning. I'm at a loss. Are you, sir? Completely stumped. Captain Gordon Taylor is at war. I don't mind saying, Patterson. I, uh, I, I, I haven't a clue what to do. Try moving to E4, sir. After six years in space, the captains of the fleet play at war games to pass the time and to freshen up their military skills. I think, sir, you've lost. Really badly. Hmm. Old Ponter's done it again. Captain Ponter coming through on visual, sir. <laughs> I'll show him. No way I'm rolling over like some dog. Eric! <laughs> it's a pleasure as always. Flash dance. Still managing to fool everyone, you old fraud. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good man. I think you'll find my ship's position in a checkmate win. You always were one step behind. <laughs> well, you taught me everything I know, Ponta. My goodness. Flash dance, the ship's breaking up. <laughs> I know your trick tactics, Ponta. The old false sense of security. It's not you. The fire, it's... Fire's broken, it's horrible. Quit the play acting. You've got a strength of 12 and two more rolls of the dice. We need help. help. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The old goat. Um, sir, I think his ship has exploded. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Look, take a look at the board, Patterson. He's cornered me in. No, I mean his ship has actually exploded. Out of the window, sir. Hmm? Just to the left, you can see the hulk of burning metal. Oh. Unaware of developments on the bridge, Stuart and Karen share a cup of tea in the revolving canteen, enjoying the panoramic and constantly changing views of never-ending blackness. Oh, I love this restaurant. Do you? Yeah, I love it. It's always open, great views. <laughs> and what you've done with the bonsai trees and the water feature, it's like a little mini lake district. <laughs> oh, thanks. A room is what you make it, isn't it? <laughs> I was um, wondering, Karen, do, do you fancy maybe, you know, going out for a drink sometime? We're having a drink. No, I mean a proper drink. I mean, come over for some food and make an evening of it. Where? Well, in my quarters. Or yours. Oh, I don't know. When? Well, tonight. Oh, I can't tonight. I'm doing my yoga. Well, I could watch. No. Listen, Stuart, I, I really like you, but I, I don't want you to get too close. What, is it my breath? No, 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 you misunderstand. We're professionals, we work together. There's a long journey ahead and, and, and I don't think we should get too intimate. <gasps> oh, no. Besides, anything like that's illegal on board. No, 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 please. Stuart, don't take it badly, you're so <sighs> sweet. I need to get the captain. You don't need to get the captain. No, out of the window, look. Oh, my God! Which ship is it? It's the Indestructible 3. I don't believe it. They said it was indestructible. That's what they said about Indestructible 2. Episode 3003. Indestructible. Ponta was always there for me. Taught me how to climb, to run, to fight. How to fold my sheets. He was an adventurer, a pioneer. He campaigned remorselessly for his own unique remit to seek out new gay life forms. He never found any, or at least none that admitted to it, but he died doing his job and he wouldn't want us to mourn... Sorry to interrupt, sir, but we need to find out why this happened. If the indestructible can explode for no reason, then so can ours. I really don't think we need to worry. This is such a lucky ship. Fleet regulations state 
The nearest ship has a duty to investigate a wreck and retrieve the black box recorder. Yeah, and to search for any survivors, sir. You're right, damn it. We need to get out there. Uh, who volunteers to steer the scout ship alongside the ghostly ship of doom over there and then spacewalk into its treacherous bowels? Anyone? Count me in, sir. Thank you, Patterson. Uh, one other. Hmm? Come on. Uh, who's never been on a spacewalk before? I know there's a few here. Karen, have you done one yet? No, sir. Well, that's decided then. Sir, with all respect, I need to be able to freely blow anything away without fuddy-duddy hippie advice being spouted out by twinkle toes here. I promise I won't get on your nerves, Melissa. We'll make a great tea. Oh, I'm going to throw up. Thank you for entering me. Hello. Hello, Clive. Hello, Chief Clive. medical scientist Clive 55 also Hello. lost Hello. someone close to him Hello. on the indestructible. His clone brother... Chief Medical Scientist, Clive 88. How are you doing, Clive 55? Oh, great, great. I've been developing a new shampoo. Keeps your hair silky smooth, but tough as old boots. It's got ferro vibro c -c 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 tones in it. Oh. Well, don't you worry, Clive 55. We're going to go out to that wreck and find out what happened. Um, excuse me a minute. Thank you for coming. I, uh... I'd better go, sir, and see if he's all right. Clive 55 is one of 137 identical brothers cloned from a single egg in a laboratory outside Warrington. Since his birth, all his brothers have passed away in a series of unfortunate accidents. Hmm. Uh, so he was the only one left? Yes. Oh, that's bad luck, isn't it? Well, it's more than bad luck. I mean, it's... It's, it's, it's really, 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 really bad luck. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for this talk, Stuart. I'm sure you've lots to do. Not at all. I'm happy to have a chat. Well, I've got photos if you're interested. Up in the wardrobe. Oh, yeah. That's Clive 1. Hmm. Clive 2. Clive 3. Clive 4. Oh, yeah. Clive 5. Bless his cottons. Never made it to science college. He was the first to go. Clive 6. Clive 7. Clive 8. Clive 9. 581, 582, 583. Look, why don't you just bring the one photo? You know, it's save on wardrobe space. Well, because everyone is different. Yeah, but you're all identical. Well, just because we're clones doesn't mean we're not different. Clive 84, Clive 85, Clive 86, 87, 89, 90, 91. Where's Clive 88? Well, we didn't really get on. Clive 92, oh. 93, 94, Clive 95. 10.30am. The really invincible has manoeuvred as close to the wreck as possible. In the docking bay, Stuart Jackson makes some tiny last-minute adjustments to the spacesuits. Right. They've got oxygen now. Meanwhile, the ship's malfunctioning Series 2 Yakamoto robot is approaching down the corridor. It's the last thing anybody needs. Oh, this is the last thing anybody Ignore needs. Ignore the robot, girls. Suits on. Can you pass me a spacesuit, Melissa? Here, you have this one. It's the larger size. Thanks. Oh, the robot's overheating again, sir. Look, will you, for heaven's sake, get out of the way? Permission to jettison the useless tin can into space, sir. What would we iron our clothes with, Patterson? Permission denied. Oh, no, no, no! What, 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 what? No. What, what is it? It's burnt a hole in my suit. No, Karen, uh, that's where your head goes. Oh. Whilst the robot is one of the most useless inbuilt features of the ship, down in the bowels sits its most useful, the VR-400 two-seater scout ship, affectionately known as the Ferret. 11.30 a.m., and Melissa and Karen are making their lonely way towards the wreck. Don't press that! I actually do. It's the eject button. How do you know? Because some of us train for these things, all right. What does this button do? I didn't think you did anything. Which did you press? This one. I'm in charge, OK? Just don't press anything. OK. Twelve a.m. and the safety of the ferret has been left behind as Melissa and Karen float across endless, weightless space. Going inside the wreck, sir. Entering what was the main corridor on level three, I think. Can you see anything? Oh, oh, it, it's a bit dark. I think there's a door. The 
The medical room should be on your immediate left. See if there's anything in there worth retrieving. Entering medical room. Everything is smashed. Lots of floating glass. I think there's something in the corner. Yes, I can make oh, out... What is it? What is it? Uh, no, it's nothing. It's just a dust pan and brush. Grab it. We haven't got one in our lab. Do we need it? Yeah, we do. Yeah. A dust pan and brush? Yeah. Okay, um... Retrieve dust pan and brush. Over. Dust pan and brush retrieved. I'm approaching two doors. Both blown open. You're heading towards the dispatch bay. Go in and get him, Patterson. Okay, sir. Pressing open hatch lock. Um, survivor not survived. Over. What? Uh, uh, didn't make it. Wounds too severe. Oh. You press the wrong button. Will you shut up? Sounds like it's a hellhole death trap in there. You both get yourselves back home. Negative, sir. I'm going for the black box. Don't press any buttons. Will you shut up? Are you two okay out there? We're fine, sir. Aren't we, Karen? Fine. Don't move. I'll be back in a minute. After 15 minutes alone in the dark, Karen starts feeling the pressure as events take a disturbing turn. Melissa? It's getting a bit lonely up here. You're doing great, Karen. Isn't she doing great, sir? Oh, yes, yes, she's doing great. She's great. Stick with it, Karen. Is that you, Melissa? Confirm, please. That you're coming towards me. Across the lab. I'm still on the floor below you. <laughs> That's funny. Why are you pointing a gun at me? What are you talking about? Stop frightening me, Melissa. I'm nowhere near you. Oh. oh. Well, if, if you're nowhere near me, then... Karen! Karen! Are you there? Patterson, what's going on? Not sure, sir. I'm on my way back to the lab. Well, Karen said you were in the lab. Patterson, what's going on? We've lost contact with Karen. Patterson's done something to us, sir. Oh, damn it, ridiculous, Jackson. I know they have their ups and their downs, but... <laughs> Back in the lab, sir. And she's not here. Karen! I can't see her anywhere. She's gone. Hello. Karen! What? Why did you scream? I didn't... Are you OK, Karen? I'm fine. A bit bored, that's all. Well, actually, very, very bored. Something's definitely not right here. We're on our way back, Captain. Did you get the black box? I've got it, sir. Good work. Get the hell out of there. It's been a long and difficult day. Captain Gordon Taylor orders an early night. Tuesday, 9 a.m. The crew prepare to listen to the black box recorder with a reviving cup of coffee in the ship's revolving canteen. Oh, I love this restaurant. Am I going to get a coffee or what? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you were a herbal girl. A girl can change. OK, are we all ready? Clive 55? Sir. Play it. Here we go. It's no joke. The fires are uncontrollable. Play acting. You've got a strength of 12 and two more rolls of the time. We need help. Send help. Oh, Ponta. Ponta, Ponta. If only I could have done more. I remember we'd be down by the river, crack of dawn, fighting nude with sticks like Vikings, till I'd fall, bleeding into the waters. Yeah, the, the black box was pretty damaged, sir. There's not much else. Clyde 55, it's a blot on a man's record to lose a ship. Ponta never lost anything, and I'm sure as hell gonna clear his name. You're the scientist, damn it, I need more. Not much of a scientist. Sorry, Karen? Nothing. Well, there is something else that survived. Not sure if it's anything. If I rewind. So there we are, dangling halfway up the cliff. Gordon Taylor starts blubbing like a newborn babe. 
Then they make him captain. Those poor sods in the Macclesfield division. Taylor <laughs> in control of a spaceship? A man's not even in control of his bladder. Do you know what we used to call him in college? Wet the bed. Did you hear that? Call him in college? Wet the bed. There, that, that noise. Wet the bed. Can you just hear a little... <clears throat> Wet the bed. Can you catch it? Wet the bed. Very, very faint noise. Just a little click just after... Wet the bed. Um, Clive? Is it just me or can anyone else hear that? Wet the bed. Clive! There's more. I've heard enough. I thought you wanted to know what happened to the ship, sir. Ponta probably pressed the wrong button, self-destructed it. The man was a klutz. Couldn't drive a golf ball. Can I go now? Oh, you lot are so boring. Uh, are you all right, Karen? Blah, blah, blah. Thank you for coming. Oh. What did you do to her out there, Patterson? I didn't touch her, sir. This is what happens when you send a useless novice on a spacewalk. Concerned by her strange behaviour, Stuart Jackson pays Karen a visit in her quarters to see if she's okay. Karen? Karen, are you in there? Who is it? Uh, it's me. It's Stuart. Ah, just what I need. Get in here. Ooh. Thank you for entering me. Oh. Uh, I was wondering if you um. Shh. I want to know what it feels like to be a woman. Sorry. I want to know what it's like. Oh. Uh, oh I, I thought you were worried about regulations. I get regulations. Oh, all right. Oh. Oh. So have you, uh, have you never, you know... Be with a man? No. Oh, wow. Kiss me. Mm. Oh, you won't believe this. But it's my first time, too. I can't tell you how, how long I've waited. Thank you for entering. Hi, everything all right here? Oh. Clive, yeah, yeah, we're fine. Uh, could you just give us a couple of minutes? Uh, I was worried about Karen. Oh, she's fine, aren't you, Karen? <laughs> I thought she wasn't quite herself. No! Yeah. Karen! Karen! Oh, she's gone now, you... Oh. Are you OK, Stuart? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. I think something happened to Karen out on the wreck. Come to the bridge and I'll explain. <sighs> And I also noticed, sir, she didn't do her washing up like she usually does. And she didn't throw away the empty toilet roll. And she had four sugars in her coffee. Karen never had sugar. I watched her take four. I'm lost here, Clive 55. I know my scientist brother was working on something on that ship. Something big. If that something escaped, and then something happened... Can you be more specific? At a guess? I'd say he let loose a personality warping virus. If everyone on board was infected and behaving out of character... Chaos! It would explain the ship exploding. <laughs> yeah, but more importantly, it would explain why Captain Ponto was calling me names. Thank you for entering me. Hello, everyone. Huh. <clears throat> Karen, uh, everything OK? Fine. Those are my clothes. Yeah. Your tight-fitting lycra feels so good. How dare you go through my wardrobe? Karen, you've had a shock out there, and you're not yourself, the so we think... Karen was boring. Don't you prefer me like this, Stuart? Uh, yeah. I suggest you arrest her, sir, and put her in isolation. It might be catching. Oh, could I, 55? You always thought you were so smart. Arrest her, Patterson. With pleasure. Nobody move! Underneath this leather singlet, I'm wired with explosives. Try anything and you'll be sorry. Karen! On the floor! Now! <gasps> Sir! Don't argue with that, Patterson. Get down! You! <gasps> pass me that hairdryer! Me? Hurry, idiot! Melissa, stand over there, next to the mirror. Why? Oh, you'll see. Just because you've got short hair doesn't mean you won't appreciate a really strong styling session. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing now? She's somehow reassembling a hairdryer. Here we go. No longer just a hairdryer, but a WND. Take some of this. <laughs> Never mind about the hairdryer. This is what I want. I want all of you to die. <laughs> Why? Because, because, because they'll be really, really special and, and everyone will know who I am. Karen, you are special. 
We love the way you clean and always wash up and cultivate plant life in the gun turret. And the way you bake fresh apple pies without any apples in them. And the, and the way you look really nice. This is no time for flirting, Jackson. Oh, permission to go to the bathroom. What's the matter, wet the bed? Worried I might blow up the ship? <laughs> wet the bed, wanna go wee wee? <laughs> She's bluffing. That top was tight on me. On her, there's no way she could hide any explosives. Right, Melissa Patterson. I've had enough of you. Watch out, she's taking off her shoe. Leave the shoe, Karen. You want some? Hey, you ain't gonna know how to handle one of these. Ah! You shot her! It was us or her. It was a shoe! Look at the size of that heel. Deadly. Besides, nobody wears my shoes and gets away with it. I didn't know you were armed, Patterson. Pocket 778 Quick Flick Stocking Gun. Amazing how a suspender belt can be deadly. In the right hands, of course. Oh, I can't believe you shot her. You did this because you never liked her. Oh, Karen. Let me kiss your little forehead. Stuart, that's not Karen. Ugh. Of course. The science of morphing. He's still breathing. Hello, Clive. Hello, Clive. You did it, eh? I did it. You should get more ambitious, Clive 55. Yeah, science. <laughs> You're better than that. At least it's a source for good. Oh. I couldn't help it. It was never easy for us brothers, was it? I just wanted to be different. He's gone. Incredible. He must have been working on it for years. It's tricky being one of 137 clone brothers. His obsessive need to be somebody else turned him bad. I'm lost here, Clive 55. Uh, yeah, he was hiding on the wreck, sir. When Patterson left Karen alone, he morphed into her image and had us all fooled. I think he enjoyed being Karen, don't you think, Stuart? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on a minute. If this isn't Karen, then where is she? Perhaps you can lab, sir. It's too dark. Oh, but hang on. I can see her. And she... She's alive! Hooray! Oh, <laughs> How does she look? I think she's a bit upset. How do you know? She seems to be cleaning, sir. Cleaning like a maniac. <laughs> I bet she'll get that shell of a ship looking good as new. Bring her home, Jackson. It is with some relief that Stuart Jackson is able to take Karen safely home in the ferret. I've no idea. Try pressing it again. Have you pressed it yet? Yes. Well, I haven't a clue what it does. And for Captain Gordon Taylor, it seems the mystery of the exploding ship has been solved. <laughs> a scientist gone bad, eh, Clive 55? That just about wraps it up. Mm, he certainly had a destructive side. He was irrational, obsessive, unstable. In a scientist, a recipe for disaster. Well, I'm sorry it ended like this, Clive 55. Actually, it's Clive. Sorry? Well, they're, they're all dead now. Every one. So the name's... Clive. Just Clive. <laughs> Just Clive. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> totally good. Clive it is. Sir, shall I put some bonsai trees on the console, just to brighten it up? Oh, yes. <laughs> good to have you back, Karen. It can't have been easy thinking you'd been left to a slow death on a rotting sort of ghost ship. Oh, you know, I had a lovely view, and I just buried myself in sorting and cleaning. Bit of a losing battle when the floor gave way. <laughs> but the place needed a good airing. That's the spirit. We need to put all this behind us, people. Right, now, 
I've got an appointment with Captain Dexter of the Endurance. We're halfway through a rather fascinating battle, and I think I've got him on the run. Uh, just a minute, sir. Uh, I think the game might already be over. No, 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 nonsense. No, he's just moved to C2, and he's got an extra roll of the dice. No, I mean his ship's just exploded, sir. He's right, sir. Look out of the window, sir. No. Not again. This is terrible. Permission to investigate, sir. Uh, no, 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 let's uh, just push on. Uh, uh, no point dwelling on it. <laughs> a fleet of two is plenty to be getting on with. Uh, let's get the uh, captain of the Unbreakable on visual, Patterson. I'll suggest a joint course for Omega Centauri. We might just find something interesting there. Oh, no, the, the Unbreakable's just blown up, sir. Uh, just to the left. Uh, can you see it? That one as well? Yes, sir. We're the only one left, sir. For the crew of the Really Invincible Three, this is a disturbing development, which raises a question. How invincible are they themselves? Someone, or something, doesn't want this mission to succeed. <clears throat> if that's true, we might be the next to blow into a million pieces. On a positive note, to be the sole remaining ship in the fleet is an honor and a responsibility. More than ever, we've got to keep smiling. With that in mind, I suggest we all repair to the virtual chill-out room for some relaxation therapy and a taste of life back home. <laughs> Come on, let's keep things going, people. Come on, now. Come on, best people. That's the way. Come on. And so, another trying day on the spaceship draws to a close. With the future of the mission in their hands and the imminent threat of death hanging over them, Keeping body and mind together is more important than ever. OK, crew, relax. Breathe with the sheep. I can't believe you shot me. It wasn't you. But you didn't know that. You really don't like me, do you? The journey can only get tougher. In The Spaceship, Captain Gordon Taylor was played by James Fleet, Karen Trex by Rosie Cavallero, Stuart Jackson by Paul Barnhill, Clive 55 by Neil Warhurst, and Melissa Patterson by Emily Joyce. Captain Ponter was Stephen Hogan, and the narrator was Nick Bolton. The Spaceship is written by Paul Barnhill and Neil Warhurst, and the director is Sally Abens. This week on The Spaceship, Karen and Melissa settle their differences and Captain Gordon Taylor runs out of toilet roll. Oh, I hate that. In the year 2104, a fleet of research cruisers were launched into space. Their mission, to seek out new life. With every moment on board preserved by wall-to-wall -wall monitoring and transmitted over time back to Earth, we've been allowed unique access to one of these ships, the really invincible three, Macclesfield Division. What you're about to hear took place live four years ago 70,000 light years from home. 10 a.m. Hmm, it's a tricky one. On an ordinary Monday morning. I'm at a loss. Are you, sir? Completely stumped. Captain Gordon Taylor is at war. I don't mind saying, Patterson. I, uh, I, I, I haven't a clue what to do. Try moving to E4, sir. After six years in space, the captains of the fleet play at war games to pass the time and to freshen up their military skills. I think, sir, you've lost. Really badly. Hmm, old Ponter's done it again. Captain Ponter coming through on visual, sir. <laughs> I'll show him. No way I'm rolling over like some dog. Eric! <laughs> it's a pleasure as always. Flash dance. Still managing to fool everyone, you old fraud. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good man. I think you'll find my ship's position in a checkmate win. You always were one step behind. <laughs> well, you taught me everything I know, Ponta. My God! Flash test! 
the ship's breaking up. <laughs> I know your trick tactics, Punter. The old false sense of security. It's not up. The fire is. Fire is broken. Stopable. Quit the play acting. You've got a strength of twelve and two more rolls of the dice. We need help. Help. Oh, I don't know. The old goat. Um, sir. I think his ship has exploded. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Look, take a look at the board, Patterson. He's cornered me in. No, I mean his ship has actually exploded. Out of the window, sir. Hmm? Just to the left, you can see the hulk of burning metal. Oh. Unaware of developments on the bridge, Stuart and Karen share a cup of tea in the revolving canteen, enjoying the panoramic and constantly changing views of never-ending blackness. <sighs> I love this restaurant. Do you? Yeah, I love it. It's always open, 